Uh, hey Lord. Let my words be few and yours be many. Let not my words be spoken but your words. Deuteronomy 6 17. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he has commanded thee. <clears throat> well, right now he's definitely talking about being vigilant, Lord. But was he talking about vigilantly keeping? Well, first the commandments of the Lord, his testimonies, and his statutes. Those three things he's talking about vigilantly um, keeping. Commandments? Well, we definitely know we got the Ten Commandments and all that stuff. The testimonies, nowadays you have a lot that the Lord has done. Um, one being, you know, Christ dying for our sins, of course, is one testimony of what has God done. Um, statute, a lot of times are very similar to what commands are. Um, usually it's like an expression or a documentation of some sorts, and I'm not exactly a college professor at all this, so, but, <clears throat> the Bible is a documentation of what God has for us, so... Being that, backtrack to Deuteronomy 6, of course, going, starting at, um, verse 2 through 7. That thou mayest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou and thy sons, and thy sons' son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. <clears throat> Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it all, or observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, that they, that, <clears throat> and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord of thy fathers had promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. <clears throat> and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. I can say right there in verse 7, right there is kind of key. Um, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest down in thy house. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Um, how many of you who have Christian friends talk about the Lord? You have friends that are Christian, but do you talk about the Lord? Um... And it's not just talking about that, it's talking about digitally teaching them onto your children, too. I mean, some of us don't have children, I don't have children, but we should be teaching them to our children. And there's, how I say this, a poor understanding of the Word of God, so it's kind of hard for when you're poor in the Word of the Lord to teach them onto your children. <clears throat> and shall talk of them when thou sit down in thy house. 
you know, and when thou walkest by the way, I mean, these things are just, it becomes part of who you are. You know, when you start talking about God, and this is what the Lord has done, and this is what the Lord has done. I mean, some of these are testimonies of what the Lord has done, and sometimes, you know, they need to be out there. Um, going back a bit, number verse 5 there is like, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. You know, what is one of the greatest commandments Jesus said was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. He said, this is the greatest commandment, is it not? And I think we forget that God is supposed to be first in our lives sometimes. And, you know, if we love the Lord God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our might, verse 7 is not going to be a very difficult thing to do. It's going to be because we love Him that we are going out and we're talking about the things of the Lord. So, right there, we're saying, hey, be vigilant about talking about this, teaching them to your children, and talking about them, and all that stuff. Where does it first start, really, is it starts with the heart. I mean, if we love the Lord, the Lord, our Lord, Jesus, God Almighty, King of the Universe, we... We'll want to talk about them, about the things of the Lord, because we do love Him. Where is God in our hearts? This is what I want to know. Where is God in our hearts? The very first chapter, or very, the very first verse of chapter 6. For these are the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that ye may do them in the land where ye go to possess it. Right there, I think that's a very key thing. It doesn't matter where we go as Christians, and this is talking more towards Israel itself, but I think this is very even for us Christians, that we do keep the commandments of the Lord and the statutes and even the judgments of the Lord. I mean, I like to think of it as sometimes we like to jump out of boiling water sometimes. Um, Christians need to sometimes stay in the fire to be refined. And a lot of times I just being Christians, we like to say, hey, I want to jump out of this fire. But it's really a fire that's really purifying us. And when you do have a heart for the Lord, you're going to want to stay in that fire because you know that fire is really drawing you closer to God because it's bringing everything that's out of you that's of the world. And when you Bring all the stuff out of you that's in the world. You have no choice but to be close to God because you are holy as God is holy. For he has not called us unto sin, but unto holiness. Isaiah 56, um, reading the whole chapter here pretty much. Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgments, or judgment, and do just, for my salvation is near to come. And my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that does this. And the son of man that layeth hold on it. That. That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. And keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Neither let the son of the stranger that has joined himself to the Lord. Speak saying. The Lord has utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord, 
unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths, and choose the things that please me, and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in my house, and where within my walls a place, a name better than the than of the sons and of the daughters, I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also the sons of the strangers that join themselves unto the Lord, to serve him, and to love the name of the Lord, to do his to be his servants, every one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and take hold of my covenant. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain, and will make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted unto my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. For the Lord which gathers the outcasts of Israel, ye yet will I gather others to him besides those that are gathered unto him. I just got to stop right there at verse 8. For right there, it's, the Lord is not talking about Israel there right now. He's talking about the Gentiles that have basically join themselves to the Lord. I like it what it says um, in verse 3 here. I think this is very important. Neither let the son of the stranger that has joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord has utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuchs say, Behold, I am a dry tree. I think that is so prevalent right there. I think a lot of times we as Christians can say this, that the Lord isn't really there for me. The Lord is far off. And sometimes we think this, but I'm saying to you is like the Lord isn't saying, hey, you're not a dry tree, you're not utterly separated from me for the people that are saying hey they are calling on the name of the Lord that think well I can't be saved you can be how is it that you can say that you can't be saved when Christ has come to die for your very sins to that separation from God cannot be no more but the blood of Christ covers you let not sin enter your body anymore carrying on to the last part here and this is um, what he's saying for Israel here all ye beasts of the field, come to devour ye, all ye beasts in the forest. His watchmen are blind, they are all ignorant, they are all dumb dogs, they cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Ye, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. They are shepherds, that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain from his quarter. Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we shall, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. This is what a lot of people say. Um, <clears throat> you know fetch wine, you know, fill ourselves up, and tomorrow shall be as the next day, and much more abundant. It's always the whole wishful thinking thing, and I think a lot of Christians are caught up in this, thinking, you know, hey, everything's gonna be better, everything's gonna be alright, you know, just trust in the Lord. It's like, yeah, okay, well, that's good with trusting the Lord. Um, 
But what happens when things aren't abundant? Are you going to say, well, trust in the Lord, things are going to get better. Things aren't getting better. Trust in the Lord, things are going to get better. Are you trusting in the Lord that things are going to get better? Or are you just playing trusting in the Lord to provide even when there isn't an abundance? That's the key that I want to ask you right there. How are you trusting the Lord? Are you trusting for abundancy? Or are you trusting for the Lord even if there is no abundancy? Lord, let your words be remembered and not my words. Let your heart pound upon the children of men. And let them know that you are God. In Jesus' name. Amen.